Here we have simplifying the square root of a whole number greater than 100. So again, we need to, it's simplifying a square root. So we're gonna go through our perfect squares. Two squared is four, three squared is nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. Um, and I guess I could go further because it is a large number, 147. Um, 100. But I'm actually going to show you a different strategy. Okay. You can also simplify a square root if you break it up into its prime factorization is what they call it. Okay. Now, if I go back just to review, right? In the previous topic, we did the square root of 28 and we did the square root of 80. Now, another method that we could have done is the prime factorization. So if I take the number 28 and I break it up, two numbers that multiply to give me 28. Let's say two times 14. This is a prime number. And to do this method, you would also need to know what your prime numbers are. My prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and that's usually as far as I go as, with prime numbers. I don't memorize anything else other than that. Um, usually just these are enough to do the problem, but every now and then you might see one of these larger numbers. So 14 is not on the list. It goes from 13 to 17. So that means 14 is not prime. If it's not prime, that means something can be multiplied together to get 14. And that would be two times seven. So two is a prime number and seven is a prime number. And so I have all of my ends are closed now, right? I can't keep going any further. So what I can do is I can write 28 as, since there's two twos, I would write two squared. And then I have this extra seven, but I only have one of them right? Just one. Then we can separate this and have two squared times square root of seven. And then the square and the square root cancel each other out. And so I'm just left with two and then square root of seven. Similarly, we could do the same thing for 80. So 80 is two times 40. This guy's a prime. That's two times 20. That's a prime. Two times 10. That's a prime. 2 times 5, that's a prime. Okay, then I have 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. So this becomes 2 to the 4th times 5. Okay, so then 2 to the 4th, we get square root of um, 2 to the 4th, and then the square root of 5. And we already know when we have a power like this, you could write it as 2 to the 4 over 2. Leave this one alone, nothing's going to reduce. And then that becomes 2 squared times square root of 5, or 4 times square root of 5. And so you can still get it there, okay? The reason why I want to do it this way is because the larger this numbers get on the inside, if I were to do it the first way I showed you, which was using the largest perfect square, you may have to have a long list of all your perfect squares. I mean, that list can get really long, okay? So it might be best to just break them up into their prime factorizations because your prime list is really, really short. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break up 147 into its prime. So I noticed that I have a 14 and a 7. So to me, that means 7 will probably divide evenly into it. So let's see. Um, 14, 147 divided by 7, I get 21. 21, I know, can be written, bro broken up as 7 times 3. And so seven is a prime number and three is a prime number. So I'm done breaking it up. So then I'm gonna put in here seven with the two power because there's two of them. And then three to the one power because there's only one three. So when I break this up, this becomes two over two, which is one. And then that would be one over two, which is gonna stay a fraction. So it's gonna stay a root. And so then the response here is seven, um, and the square root of three. Now, same thing for 135, I could break it up. 
I see a five at the end, so I know five goes into that. 135 divided by five. My calculator tells me is 27. This is a prime number, this is not. I can break that up into three times nine. Three is a prime number. I can break up nine into three times three. And now all the ends are closed. So 135 becomes five um, to the one power times one, two, three. Three to the three power. Now here's something that we may or may not have discussed yet. So let's go ahead and split this up into square root of five times the square root of three to the third power, right? Now square root of five is not gonna change. It's gonna stay the square root of five. But the square root of three to the first power, three and then over two, what do we get when we do that? We end up getting three to the one and a half if I change it to a mixed number, right? This is an improper fraction, and if I change it to a mixed number, it looks like this. Now remember what a mixed number means. It means that that's actually one plus a half. That's what one and a half means. It means one plus a half. And we know from our exponent rules that you only add exponents when the bases are the same and there's multiplication going on. So this exponent would be one, that exponent would be one half. So I've got the square root of five times a regular three, and then I have three to the one half, which is the square root of three. And if I take my two roots and I multiply them together, I have this three in the front, and then square root of five times square root of three is square root of 15. And so the final answer is three times square root of 15, okay? Now, um, another way I could have done that is pretty similar to that method. The only thing different is, is because I knew I was doing square roots, when I came to write this step, what I could have done is put the two together, because knowing that it's a square root, meaning the index here is a two, I could have put those two guys together and then the leftover guys in the other parent, the other uh, square root. And then here these would cancel and I'd have three and the two guys that were left over, I could multiply them together and I'd get three square root of 15. So you can do it the long way if you want or you can just group them with squares and the leftover people put them in their own parentheses. Um, see, I, I actually did that over here without thinking about it because you need the pair for a square root, right? So you would have had um, the pair there and then in the other parentheses or in the other square root, you would have had the one guy that was left over, which was the three. Here the root and the power cancel and you still have that square root of three. Okay, so again, this is not going to be the end of you of us seeing these kinds of square roots and these numbers. Um, things are going to get more complicated as they start to introduce variables and such. Um, so we really need to get this down with the numbers so that when they throw in letters, we still have a chance at um, simplifying those expressions.